Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Acid-Base Reactions module. This is video number 13, looking at acid dissociation. In a previous video, we were looking at the ways of describing solutions in terms of their strength or concentration. And we realized that one of the ways of doing that is to actually start to get a sense of where the equilibrium lies between the reactants and the products when an acid um, is added to water. In fact, the extent to which acids are ionized is what we use to determine their relative strengths. And we use this with the acid ionization constant, Ka. We can calculate the value of Ka in the same way that we usually do for any equilibrium constant by looking at the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. Now, if we know that our acid is going to be added to water, and this is going to be in an equilibrium with the hydronium ions and the anion from the acid, we know that water is going to be a uh, liquid, so therefore its concentration will not change, it will remain constant. So the Ka value then is going to simplify to the concentration of the H3O plus ions multiplied by the um, A minus ions and then all divided by the concentration of HA. Now what you can see already when we start to look at something like this is A, there's an assumption that's made that the, re that the ratio here is one to one. So this works for what we call a monoprotic acid. So an acid which is only going to liberate one proton in solution. So uh, HCl would be an example of that. If we had a, uh, an example of something like a diprotic acid, so that would be something like H2SO4, then this doesn't work to the same extent. We just have to change uh, our formula a little bit. What we notice though very quickly is that as we analyze this particular equation, then we know that a strong acid is going to have a high degree of ionization and therefore the product concentrations will be high and the concentration of the acid molecules will be low. And as a result of that, we will have a value for Ka which is high. And we started to kind of introduce this idea in the previous uh, video. So hopefully this is just a quick review. What we can do with each of these though, of course, is we can start to get a bit of an idea of how these might look if we were to represent them um, in some sort of a model. So if we had a model and we knew that within our model uh, we had some water molecules the more water molecules we have the more dilute the solution is going to be but we might also have some molecules of the acid and what we might also find is that some of these water molecules also have um, some ionization that has left the uh, anion from the acid floating around so when we start to look at representing models of each of these we would be looking for the anions themselves and the degree to which they have been isolated the formation of the hydronium ions, the H uh, plus, which would become H3O plus uh, like this when these are being added to water molecules. And also the fact that there may or may not still be molecules of the original acid remaining in the solution. So we need to make sure that we've got a, um, I guess, a visual representation of what strong and weak acids might look like, as well as a mathematical value that helps to tell us something about them. The problem with the mathematical value is some of the, some of the absolute values can be quite low and yet comparatively very high and therefore indicating quite strong solutions. In order to see that, we're going to have to do some calculations. And of course, you're going to have a look at a few of these in class in order to help you understand some of these concepts in just a little bit more detail, and also in terms of their application for particular types of problems. 
To take a couple of specific examples and go just a little bit further, let's look at an example of a monoprotic and diprotic acids, one of which in each combination is strong, the other which is weak or weaker. So we've looked at hydrochloric acid. I'll leave the water out for the moment, but accept the fact that the H plus ion is usually in the form of a hydronium ion. We know that this is pretty much a completion reaction. The, the equilibrium is so far to the right on this one that effectively we have no hydro, uh, hydrogen chloride molecules in the water. We just have hydrogen ions and chloride ions. However, hydrofluoric acid, on the other hand, is not as strong as hydrochloric. We can see from the Ka value this is the Ka value here, that the concentration of the um, hydrogen ions and fluoride ions has meant that we don't have complete ionization. So we would describe hydrochloric acid as a strong acid and hydrofluoric acid as a weak acid by comparison. And what I talked about before was the absolute values and 10 to the minus four looks like a small value, but compared to 10 to the minus six or 10 to the minus 10, it's quite large. So some of these terms are relative terms. So when I talk about strong and weak in relative terms, and it's useful to talk about these two because both chlorine and fluorine are in the same group in the periodic table. So they're a nice thing to compare. What about something though like sulfuric acid? Now sulfuric acid is another acid that we know is a very strong acid, but when it ionizes, it ionizes to H plus and HSO4 minus. So this is what we call the first ionization. And the HSO4 itself is capable of acting as an acid and creating an H plus and an SO4 2 minus. And you might think this is the second ionization. And you might think that uh, both of these would be the same and therefore they would uh, present a solution which is pretty much uh, only hydrogen ions and sulfate ions. But in actual fact, we can see, and you can see that the order of magnitude is actually larger than the previous one. So, so this is stronger. If we were to compare HSO4 minus with HF, we would say HSO4 minus is a stronger because it has a larger Ka value. Nevertheless, this doesn't fully ionize. So it's something to keep in mind with something like a diprotic acid like uh, sulfuric acid in that its second ionization is not always a completion. So in fact, when we're looking at sulfuric acid, we might actually say that the second one is more of an equilibrium. Now, it still lies a long way to the right. It's still relatively strong compared to other um, acids, but it's not as strong as the original sulfuric acid um, that it it started as. So these are just some of the different ways we can use the Ka values to make comparisons between the strengths of acids and of course we can do likewise with the strength of base solutions. But we'll look at some more examples in future videos. Thanks for watching.